Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Plays the Binding of Isaac Atreus Plus. It's the first I lost in the last episode. I lost? What was me from a week ago thinking? My god, this is the first episode I've recorded since I've been back. It's the first episode of anything I've recorded since I've been back. And we're gonna be a polyon, which is good because I was like, you know, it'd be nice is an episode where we could just focus on the commentary, focus on, you know, playing at a base subsistence level and not have to worry about inane nonsense like trying to suck up all of the items in the optimal way and oh, well if you suck this shot speed up, it's a shot speed upgrade. The worst case scenario on a void play is you get a shot, sp shot speed upgrade of a slightly lower magnitude Y4 WM Y489. This strikes me and I'm talking out of my butt, basically. So, you know, any pass the Listerine, please. Um, I feel like this is a seed we've had before. And I might, again, like, I, I don't claim to know that I've had this seed before. It's a little ridiculous. You know, I can't even remember what happens in every episode because, I, I mean, quite frankly, I would, I would make a joke at my own expense. Um, but the, the reality of the situation is I spend a lot of every single day uh, more or less like recording videos and streaming so if you ever ask me like hey what were you thinking in episode you know 496 at this time I'd be like honestly I I enter a sort of Walter White-esque fugue state and um, just sort of go with it as if I'm oh what's the name of that actress who was in just go with it I'm not talking about Jennifer Aniston she was a uh, Brooklyn Decker is that it from um, Tim Heidecker's uh, show of the same name, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Anyway, okay, this is—it's become a multi-layered joke that's not funny so much as uh, just referential. Anyway, here we are playing some Isaac again. I always like to start these whole episodes um, where I've come back from being away by saying it's probably there's a chance that it's going to be garbage for like, yeah, like I actually lucked out there getting hit by an enemy that couldn't kill me in one hit instead of getting hit by the one that could hit me in one hit um, and thus granting me the invincibility that allowed me to s survive um, but there's like a chance I wouldn't say even a good chance yet but there's definitely a chance that I uh, that I squander this and lose once twice three times a loser we'll find out because I have not been not only have I not been playing Isaac I gotta be honest I haven't been playing anything that's a half-truth. Um, for, for those of you who are unaware, I was away for the last week. I went to my parents' house. Um, basically because I like them and we're peers at this point in my life. And also, it's like I know that they miss me and I miss them. So it's uh, a good situation. Plus, I only see them like, you know, once... Maybe like once every eight months or something like that. Sometimes a little bit more. Sometimes a little bit less, but um, I went and I was like, I'm tired of video games. I don't want to hang out, just play video games anymore. I'm just going to like, I don't know, sit down and watch TV or something like that in hindsight. But um, I, I went out there and was like, I'm not going to play anything. No, my God, why am I suffering so much here? This is normal base stats. It's not like it's a bad Eden roll or something. Um... And then after like three days, I was like, I could just play like a little Heroes of the Storm, but I only brought my laptop with me, which is basically like a potato. Um, and then I didn't even have a mouse, so I just had a trackpad, and that wasn't working out too well. So I was like, hey, Dad, do you mind if I borrow your wireless mouse? And I'm pretty sure that he bought this. Oh, this is bad. I'm pretty sure that he bought the wireless mouse in like, you know, the year 2008. So it was getting a little... Uh, Long in the tooth. Long in the latency. Those Heroes of the Storm games did not go well. And my teammates were very, very angry at me. Although, my Korean is a little rusty. So I wasn't totally sure what they were saying. But there was a lot of stuff that I won't repeat out of, um... You know, the, the standard decorum that I like to bring during these episodes. So, um... Please? I hate that we got Curse of the Blind to start with. Because it means that I'm going to pick up everything. I'm not going to avoid something. Because we know it's not going to be... Um, it, it's literally impossible for it to be an active item if it's coming from a, a standard boss. Unless my, uh, my loot tables are a little bit messed up, as Austin would say. I don't believe that we can have a, um, an active item from a boss that is vanilla. Well, not, not vanilla, because that implies that they're, you know, they can't be a champion, etc., etc. I'm just, basically I'm stunned that we lived. 
And then, uh, this is life affirming for me. Although we can still die in one hit on the next floor. Please be HP. It's squeezy, which is actually basically HP. Sweet. Um, but yeah, you know, as always, two days before I left, I was like, I can't wait till I get there. And then two days before I left to come back, I was like, I can't wait to come back. You know, it was, uh... It was, a, it was a productive trip from a mental health standpoint, for sure. It's always nice to see my parents. I went back to my old uh, alma mater, actually. My I don't know if you call it an alma mater if it's high school. I went back to my the high school I graduated from um, to, to present a bursary to a graduating student that I had never met before in my life, but I was assured that she was a great student. And, I mean, honestly... When they were like, this is who's getting the war the award, and then I looked through the program, uh, she was getting, like, 11 other awards. So I was like, first off, hey, what kind of capitalist nightmare you got going on here? One person's getting, like, 80% of the awards. She's like the Warren Buffett of having a 4.09 GPA or something. Um, but then secondly, I was assured that, you know, this, this was going to a person that it was deserved. Uh, that, that deserved it, I should say. Not that I was fronting the cost for it to begin with. But anyway, that was that was weird and surreal, but also kind of cool. I'm trying to think of what else really. It was Canada's 150th birthday. I celebrated. I'm, don't take this. It's Curse of the Blind again. Are you kidding me? Don't take this as me um, disparaging my parents. We're going to take this as well. Just yeah, Oh, it's so good. Um, disparaging my parents at all. At all, at all. My parents are, like, a, an exaggeration of the characterization of adult me, and I have great respect for that. Oh, we smelted nothing at all, I think? It was a little dicey there. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know how I'm like, oh, my sleep schedule is, like, slightly... I wake up later than I'd like to wait up, wake up, and I'm like, that's embarrassing, you know? They're like that, but to a, a larger degree, because they've worked their butts off their whole lives and now they're like in their 50s so they're just like you know a little on the older side they're not geriatric at least but well not yet but you know we it was canada's 150th birthday july 1st i know oh you're like a little baby country my country is i don't know what accent that is it's just you know like Pangeic enough to offend everybody, which is probably not that you use that word. But anyway, I don't think that word actually exists. Rotten baby. At least on our Curse of the Blinds here, we're getting some okay stuff. Um, but yeah, we so we like went out for dinner at like 5.30. And I, just to put this in perspective, I don't think there's anything wrong with eating dinner at 5.30. Um, but this is 5.30 Eastern Time. And normally, Kate and I eat dinner at like between... 10 p.m. to midnight Pacific time. So I'm actually eating dinner like, geez, I'm trying to think about it now. It's like nine hours before I sometimes eat dinner. This is so good. Okay, we, we can't open them all. Unless we get two of Ace of Clubs. That's not going to do it. Um, but we can at least suck up all the books. And we're going to get Bookworm. Just give me, like, the Bible or something to do this. A necronom. I mean, it's okay. I'm not against it, but... Okay, now we'll suck it all up. We got a bomb out of it as well. Obviously, we just got the active benefits out of it. But that's still, like, really good. Now we can't go to the shop. But I'm just gonna, I mean, probably blow myself up and then respawn as Dark Judas anyway. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm taking way too long for this, um... For this anecdote here. But it's because the run has had some kind of exceptional circumstances that have been very good recently. Um, so we ate dinner at like 5.30. And then my parents have like a, a circle of friends. So they were in touch with their circle of friends. And they're like, hey, you know, two of them are down at this um, pub downtown. You want to just stop in and grab a drink with them? So yeah, we stopped in. We had a couple of drinks. At this point, it's like 8 p.m. And then we're like, the fireworks start at 10. And they were like, I don't really think I'm going to stay awake to see the fireworks. So I'm just going to go home. Which is fine, you know. I'm, I'm not a big fireworks fan myself, but you know that's that's the um, that's the life I've been living for like the past week, and it's it's not the same as the life that I lead in Vancouver. So it was it's always nice to get away and get some perspective. I'm gonna get this just so we uh, are, are more or less guaranteed to live, um, and and then come back, and it, it's nice to come back. And I think that's kind of the ideal for for traveling. 
And I, I there's nothing more circle jerky than, you know, when people who travel talk about traveling, like it's the greatest thing in their life. And I'm, I'm, I mean, now I'm getting off like every tangent as a tangent. I'm getting used to my own commentary style again here, but there's nothing wrong with traveling, but different strokes for different folks. Whenever people are like, you know, it changed my life when I went to Thailand and got drunk for two weeks. I was like, eh, maybe, maybe not. You know, for some people, not for other people. Not that I'm disparaging it, but, you know, it, definitely there have been times in my life where I, like, go away for a week, you know, in the pre-YouTube era. This we should, like, use this. Yeah, why not, right? Um... I don't know. I kind of like having a little extra speed right now. I mean, I'm getting old. I know that the left hand could be anything. It could even be a speed upgrade, but... prefer taking the guaranteed speed upgrade. But there are definitely times I've gone away before in my life, and when I come back, you know, you're dreading it. For the last, like, 40% of the trip, you're like, oh, there's only, you know, 25% uh, of the trip left here. It's like the opposite of, um... When you work like an hourly job, when you do your math, you know, you're like, well, it's 3 p.m. and I work until 4.30, so we're officially 87.5% done the day, you know, you, you do that kind of math, or at least I did. Um, it's good to, it's good to want to go away, recharge, and it's good to come back, and I, I always come back feeling recharged and uh, full of resolve. Never gonna lose an Isaac again. Definitely, I'll tell you that with 100% certainty. Probably the next episode of Kerbal Space Program, they're gonna give me like an actual scholarship to NASA University. Did I say NASA weird there? It's one of the, it, that, that word has become like, um, it's, it's become like a bagel word for me, where I, I worry so much about whether or not I'm pronouncing it correctly that I think I pronounce it more incorrectly now as a result. So, we could roll the dice here. I would not recommend it. And, a, I mean, it's, I know, okay? Like, it's not that exciting to just pick it up, but I'm never gonna say no to an orbital when our only other orbital's big fan. But hopefully we'll get a chance to use the Apollyon bonus pretty well here. But, this, honestly, this run has popped off. Still a little dicey on uh, HP, but we have... A lot of damage and a tier rate upgrade, so that's good. And that, honestly, that was pretty much the gist of uh, of my of my time away. My parents lead a, a domestic lifestyle, which they have earned. So I'm not disparaging it. You know, I'm the guy who's like asking somebody to go skydiving is selfish. So I'm not the kind of guy who's like, Mom, you guys can't go to bed at 10 p.m. You know, I, I'm definitely like cool with it. But it's nice to be back as well. Back on my own schedule and, you know, li living my own life. I also like, my parents recently moved into a, um, into a smaller place. They've been downsizing because they're two adults, not two adults with like, you know, eight kids at this point. So, um, not that they ever had eight children that I know of, but, um, you know, it used to be when, when Kate and I would visit, and Kate couldn't come this time because she was writing her own, uh, well, she was sorry, she was taking her own uh, Japanese language proficiency test, but anyway. Um, I, I, normally, it's like an opportunity for me to live a very gluttonous life as well, because like um, many people of a certain age, their kitchen is just so stocked. It's not like we're hurting over here, but we just don't stock as much because we don't have the storage space. Um, whereas when I go to their house, they're like, oh yeah, well, Chips were on sale at Costco three months ago, so we got, like, 80 bags. And I'm like, that's awesome. And then I wait for them to go to sleep, and then I'm like, I'm going to have one bag of those a night until I leave. But now they live in a place that's um, that's much smaller. So even after they go to sleep, they kind of got, like, a bead on the kitchen. They can tell what's going on in there. So I lived a very snack-free life for the past week, which was... I, ma I made sure to make up for it. Um, I got a McDonald's breakfast this morning. Not necessarily the most unhealthy thing in the world, but it, it puts me back in the saddle again, you know what I mean? So we got a speed and shot speed increase here. Um, and the... Uh, oh, careful. The speed increase is nice, not because I need 1.45 speed necessarily, but because uh, I am excited to be able to get rid of the uh, goat hoof if we want to. Which we may or may not. Hematemesis. Irrelevant. I also, like, if you, this is such a narrow, like, not even inside baseball, like, inside baseball is stuff that people in the industry care about. This is just boring. But, 
if you ever want to get back on like a normal sleep schedule uh, and you live in the Pacific Standard Time Zone, go spend a week in the Eastern Standard Time Zone with people that hold like jobs with normal hours. Uh, because that's pretty much what happened. I took I took a red eye in, landed at like 7 a.m. Monday morning, took a four hour nap, and from that point onwards, I was on EST. So I was waking up at like 8 a.m., which is 5 a.m. my time. And now I'm like, it's early in the morning here, dooby doop, in Vancouver, and I'm I'm feeling spry. I've already I went out for breakfast. I got a coffee. I had a very leisurely morning. Uh, you know, posting nonsense on Twitter, and now here I am actually getting my job done. So that I predict that'll last about 36 hours at most, but still. And I had like, we can get Book of Shadows here. We should try it. Um, I had I had a travel nightmare, and I, I I'm skeptical. We have we must have gotten the Bible um, from that last book in there too. Um, I'm skeptical of people because people lie. And I don't mean... People embellish, okay? I don't mean this to be like, never trust anybody. Because everybody's a liar. I shouldn't have walked over that, obviously. Um, all I mean to say is that if you ever ask some people about travel, it's always a nightmare. And I mean, first off, you gotta remember it's a privilege. But secondly... And people were like, oh, how was your how was your 25-minute flight? It was awful. The captain turned the seatbelt signs on the whole time, and there was a mild bump, and I just, I, it was not okay. I'm not chiding people for having anxiety, but, you know, if you've never flown, and you heard someone talk about a routine flight, it's always, like, it's the worst thing in the world. And I make an effort to be, like... Kate and I, when we fly back from Japan, it's like a 10-hour flight. Unless it's actually bad in any way, people are like, how was that flight? You know, the subtext being like, it was torture. And I'm like, nah, dog, it was like being in an airplane for 10 hours. I watched like five movies. It was basically like a really, like, slightly uncomfortable day out. Oh my god, that was disgusting. I'm sorry. It was like a slightly uncomfortable day off. You know, it's not that bad. But this one was bad. So, like, I flew in. Or, no, I flew in. Sorry, I was getting ready to leave. Leaving from a small airport. So, like, the flights, literally, you get through security in, like, 45 seconds. And then they're like, okay, well, just hop on the plane. You walk out on the tarmac, hop on the plane. But this time, like, oh, you know, you got to go to Toronto. In Toronto, there's a thunderstorm, so they won't let us take off here until the thunderstorm stops. So that was, like... A 45 minute delay, and then as a result of the 45 minute delay, I couldn't make my connection, so they rebooked me to a slightly later flight. I landed, I look at the board in the airport, uh, quite hungry, I'd like to point out here. Um, look at the board in the airport, and it's like, hey, your flight is on like final call, and it's across the airport. So I was, first off, in my head, I was like, nice, I finally get to live that movie moment where I get to sprint across the airport. And I did, and I loved every second of it because it made me look like a very important person. They're like, oh my god, this guy's sprinting across the airport. He must be accomplishing some very important business. And I didn't do as much as I could have to dissuade that notion. So I ran across the airport and I uh, found my gate, looked at the gate agent. She's just looking around like there's nobody else at the gate. And I'm like, hey, did you guys start boarding yet? And I gave her like a little smile. And she was like, actually, we're almost done. So, oh, okay. I tried to bring some levity to the situation. I didn't realize I should have told the pilots on my first flight to land faster. Let's get down here. We might be able to do boss rush. Anyway, then I get seated on the airplane. Keep in mind, I'm not in great shape these days. Sprinted across this airport, you know, probably took three or four minutes. Not sprinting three or four minutes. That's like, it would kill you, but... Um, like, jogging somewhat strenuously. And I get there, and I'm, I'm out of breath, not feeling fantastic, but I'm like, I made it. As soon as I sit down, the pilot's like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna have a 25-minute delay on this flight. Just want to keep you guys posted. There's a maintenance issue with the plane. Okay, cool. Look, you guys have a hard job. Maybe you could think about propagating that notice out to the board in the airport so that people don't have to sprint across the whole you know, freaking airport to get to the plane just before, uh, you know, just for them to late or just as soon as you board, you're going to be like, ah, by the way, just kidding. I'm distracting myself from the Isaac play a little bit here. So I sat down, I'm like, you know, out of breath, like, ah, probably not going to have a heart attack on this flight, which is good. Um, and then 
I mean, after that point, it's like we're pretty much just in an airplane. I watched the second season of uh, Master of None, and I thought it was fantastic television. I watched the Mike Birbiglia film, Don't Think Twice, and I was like, this is a wonderful film. And I, I had a great time realizing that I was a, a hipster. Uh, sure, let's take this. Then we landed, and I'm waiting at the carousel for my bags. You know where this is going. People always go, oh, and then they lost my bags. And I'm like, ah, I don't think it happens as much as people seem to think it happens. It happened to me this time. Um, waiting for a long time at this carousel, like, what's up? And then eventually I went and talked to some guy. Well, not some guy. He was at a, <laughs> he was at a sign that said baggage information. And I said, hey, my bag didn't show up. And he's like, well, well that's weird because I mean, we don't want any of this. That's weird because, like, we have this thing from Toronto that says your bag was scanned and as a result it should be on the airplane and I was like yeah you got me what I'm trying to do is see if you guys have found two bags that look exactly the same as mine so I can steal a random person's luggage because I got nothing better to do after taking a so basically I was being a little bit of a jerk but anyway yeah my bag was lost but even still like it was mostly like an okay trip and that's why I don't know but I guess I, what I want to say is that where, where I was originally going to come at this from is like, don't let people tell you that even the sm anytime you're traveling and somebody has like a small inconvenience, they're like, it was a nightmare. I asked for a corner room in the Holiday Inn. They didn't have any corner rooms left, so they gave me a, a room close to the elevator. And you're like, little people these days are incompetent and don't know how to do their jobs. You know, it's like a big circle jerk. Um... But this was actually pretty inconvenient in the whole scheme of things. But I got my chin up, you know. Also, on the... And this is now getting into, like, petty complaints. I would... You know, let's see what we're going to do with that. I would say that my first complaints, like losing my suitcase, um, not so much a petty complaint. Having to sprint across the airport, airport only to sit down and have them be like, actually, jokes on you is gonna be like another 30 minutes till we take off. Eh, I mean, more of a petty complaint, admittedly, but still kind of annoying, because I didn't get a chance to eat. Then I had to eat on the airplane, which A, was like a little expensive, but B, they had like no food, and they're like, the people in front of me are going, you know, ah, we shouldn't fight the hush. People in front of me are like, I want the chicken wrap, and they're like, well, sorry, sir, we don't have any chicken wraps, and the guy's like, what's up? And they're like, oh, they didn't cater the plane properly like we don't we only have like half the meals we're supposed to have so in the end I guess I was lucky because I was sitting in like row 15 people back there in row 40 are getting you know nothing so I had this like $13 airplane pizza that was basically a lunchable it was not fantastic but then I got home and opened my fridge and my wife before she left cooked a bunch of Korean barbecue and just left it in there it's, it's like a 10 out of 10 like, let's renew our vows sort of situation. Obviously, that's ridiculous. We've only been married three years. I'm not going to renew my vows. That's like a 10-year-plus sort of thing. But, you know, I was like, you, you've you done a very good thing here that I'm appreciative of, and you've helped me on my hard day. Now, mind you... <laughs> I mean, we're not going to get any items here. You know what? Let's do a five-room for... Just give us more time to talk to one another. Um... Mind you, she was also out of town, and you know, after I landed, I'm like, hey, I think they lost our suitcase, and she's like, that's pretty crappy. And then the next tweet, or not tweet, sorry, the next, like, text that comes in is, like, her five-star meal from whatever restaurant she's eating at, and I'm like, so we're living in different worlds right now. I'm, a, I'm like, stinking the whole airport up. Running, running wild on this, like, 600-calorie airplane pizza that I ate, uh... Four and a half hours ago, wondering where the heck my toothbrush is. And um, you're like, oh, the, the lamb shoulder is a little tough. She didn't actually say that. She said it was delicious. But it's like we're on. I'm, I'm in a first world problem situation, but you're in like a zero with world problem situation right now. And I wish I could be there. But I couldn't. I also, I have, and again, I know, I understand how. Inside baseball and circle jerky, etc. Whatever adjectives you want to use for talking about being at the airport, uh, how how self-serving it is, you know. But I have an airport routine, and I think the routine is important because it's helped me get over my airplane anxiety. I like to arrive 
probably like half an hour earlier than you're supposed to, just in case anything happens, nothing ever does. Um, then you get through security, you go find like an okay sit down restaurant, and you order like whatever you want, have a drink or two, then get on the airplane. And then I'm relaxed and I might even be able to catch like 45 minutes of sleep over the flight, although usually that's uh, a pipe dream and I'm good to go. But uh, neither neither of my uh, flying days allowed me to experience this and it was like mildly stressful, but still I guess you gotta keep it in perspective. It also made a liar out of me because I, I usually fly Air Canada because I've had good experiences with them, and I appreciate that almost every plane has Seatback Entertainment, which is, I'm not doing, I'm doing it again. There's no reason to fight Isaac on each one of these floors. Let's just see how ridiculous it can get. And then, like, I've, people have been going, you know, Air Canada voted North America's best airline. What a, what a joke. And I'm like, hey, you guys, it's actually, like, pretty good. And then, like, everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I'm not going to blame him for the thunderstorm, but still. I mean, you know what? I'm going to blame him for the thunderstorm. You, we got Doppler radar. You can't see a thunderstorm coming a day in advance and be like, Hey, guys, just show up to the airport like 45 minutes later. Rather wait till everybody gets through. Okay, you know, they're doing their jobs. But at the same time, you know what? <laughs> this is an outrage. All right, so that was like 20 minutes of plane conversation. I didn't even talked about what happened on the plane, which is largely uh, banal, so I'm not gonna. But, you know, I could, I could spin some mild um, inconveniences out of it. For example, hey, uh, dude, I know they've turned the seatbelt signs on. If you're in row 40F, you can't get up, walk to row 15, and then block me out. We all got connections here, dude. We live in an egalitarian society, okay? Most, to some extent. Um, you know, I booked this seat specifically because I wanted to disembark 45 seconds faster than the people at the back. It's the cheapest way to feel superior over your fellow man. I mean, business class, dude, that's going to be like a $500 upgrade. No thank you. <laughs> You're telling me as long as I just check in early, I can sit up here at the front? Absolutely. Air Canada also uses a silent auction style. Uh, now to to get business class upgrades if they haven't sold them out in advance. So instead, what they used to do is, hey, you want uh, free food, free drinks, and a lay down seat? Give me like a million dollars. And you were like, that's ridiculous. Obviously, I'm not going to pay you a million dollars for three hours of slightly greater but still suboptimal comfort. And then they said, okay, you got a good point. I'll tell you what. What if you bid against your fellow passengers for business class? And you go, ooh, that's a cool idea. What's the minimum bid? A million dollars. Oh, sign me up. Yeah, dude. Because then you've got the little, the art of the deal thing going on where you could be paying a little bit less than the people uh, that are around you. So you feel like you've got some superiority. No, I didn't do that. To, to this day, I have never... Uh, Dude, this is such a good shop. Or not shop, a chest here. Uh, to this day, I have never flown first class. A lot of YouTubers do, and I'm not trying to throw them under the bus. But I'm throwing them under the bus a little bit. <laughs> Which I don't mean to do, because, I mean, I, I guess above a certain income threshold, it, it sort of makes sense where you're like, you know, I'm going to make more just from being on this plane than the ticket's gonna cost me, but I'm like we just, we're all on the same plane first off, there's the obvious undertone of, if this thing goes down, we're all going down, it's not like you're gonna be in first class like, I would like to get out of the emergency exit first, I was in first class and everybody in coach is gonna be like, oh oh, after you sir, after you the other thing is, you're mostly still just sitting down. If I had, like, points or something, but I'm too lazy to collect those. If I had points or something, I'd probably consider it the, the chance of an upgrade. But just paying for it? I don't know. It's a little cost prohibitive, in my opinion. I only get angry when I see, like, 10-year-olds in first class. Because I'm like, I don't know, it's not your fault. You know, your parents are rich. Ball. <laughs> I don't know what that... 
expression is, your parents are rich, ball! But no, your parents are rich, ball out, you know? Until you get old enough to feel guilty about it. Um, because you should be making your own way. But, you know, if you're, if you're a 10 year old and your parents buy you a first class ticket, you should have to trade with like a, like an iron worker in coach. Let them experience it. They worked for it, you don't even know it yet. They pay tax to fill the loopholes that your parents are using to save enough money to put you in first class. Anyway, long story short, feels good to be back. Great episode uh, for coming back, because it was just like the easiest steamroll of all time. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.